So I'm going to finish out the last page. These are two separate questions. So I want you to find the 10th term of this one and find the 10th term of this one. So it's arithmetic. So the first thing I'm going to do is write a sub n equals a1 n minus 1 times d. I'm not finding the sum. So this formula, my non-bread, is not going to happen because I'm not finding the sum of anything. Okay. The problem is, though, I need an a sub 1 but I don't have an a sub 1, so I'm going to pretend this is going to be my first term. If I pretend this is my first term, 2 back, I have to pretend this is 2 back, so that's my second term, which means I'm pretending that's my eighth term. Okay? So I have my first term, and that's my second term. So I'm going to go 12.4 plus, I'm going to use my second term to figure out the pattern. Remember, if I had the pattern, life for me would be a lot easier. Now I subtract 12.4, I get negative 2.3 equals 1D, D equals negative 2.3. Now that I have my pattern, I can find my fake eighth term, which is really my tenth term. So A sub N equals A1, N minus 1 times D. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm trying to find my eighth term. So I'm still going to use my fake first term. To find my eighth term, and I know the pattern. And now I'm going to pick up the calculator, and I'm going to go on 7 times negative 2.3 is negative 16.1 plus 12.4 plus 12.4, and I got negative 3.7, but it's not my eighth term, it's my tenth term. Okay? I'm honestly not going to do this one because it's the exact same thing. I don't know why I put the same problem twice. So this is the answer I'm looking for. Let's go to the back page. All right. Find the sum for the arithmetic sequence. Sequence. It said sum, so as soon as it says sum, that means I'm having some non-bread. And now I'm actually going to use my formula, plug it in. They want the sum of the first 18 of them, so I'm going to go 18. My first number is 6 over 2. Now remember how I said arithmetic is the most difficult? So I need to figure out what my 18th term would be. So I could go all the way to 18, but you know I'm not going to let you do that. So you've got to use the formula a sub n equals a1 n minus 1 times d. My first term, trying to find my 18th term, and my pattern is 2. 18 minus 1 is 17, times 2 is 34, plus 6 is 40. That means 40 goes in there. 40 plus 6 is 46. I'm going to go 18 divided by 2, which is 9. I'm going to turn it on. 9 times 46. So the sum of my first 18 numbers, I'll move that over, is 414. Okay? So now I'm going to do the next problem. This next problem is the exact same, but a little bit different. They want the sum of the first 20 numbers. So I use this formula. So I'm going to plug in 20. Now, the difference is I have to find the first term. Well, I don't see the first term there. But if I plug in 1 right now, I can actually figure out my first term. 4 times 1 is 4. 59 minus 4 is 55. So that's my first term. I can figure out my 20th term by going 59 minus 4 times 20. And that's 80. 59 minus 80 is negative 21. And now I'm going to do the same thing. That's 10. And then 55 minus 21 times 10, so 340. So the sum of the first 20 numbers is 340. So notice, I'm asking for the same thing, but presented in a different way. Next question, geometric or arithmetic. I notice it's divide by negative 4, which means the ratio is negative 1 fourth. That answers letter B, and it's geometric. I guess that's all I needed to do. Find the tenth term in the geometric sequence. a sub n equals a1, r to the n minus 1. 6, my ratio is times 3 times 3 times 3. Oh, they want the tenth term. So now I just straight plug it in. 3 to the ninth times 6. I don't always trust the calculator. So a sub 10 equals 118098. Okay, find the seventh term of the geometric sequence. This question 
is exactly like this question where you don't have a first term, so you had to fake it. So I'm going to play the same game, and I'm going to fake it. This will be my first term, two back, two back, two back. It's geometric, a sub n equals a1 to the r, r to the n minus 1. And I'm going to use my fourth term. So 320 equals my first term times my ratio. If I knew my ratio, life would be easier. 4 minus 1. So what I want you to see is this was covered there. Now I'm going to divide by 5. And that's 64 equals r cubed. What times what times what is 64? That's 4. I figured out my ratio. Now that I figured out my pattern, life is easier. So now, a sub 1, r to the n minus 1. Use my fake first term, my real ratio, and my fake fourth term. Or I'm sorry, I'm trying to find my fake fifth term. Minus 1 equals my fake fifth term. So I'm going to go 4 to the fourth, because 5 minus 1 is 4, and then times 5, and I get 1280. But it's not my fifth term, it's my seventh term, so a sub 7. It's not the sum, there's no s. Next one. This next one is finding the sum. I see that it's geometric, so I use a1 over 1 minus r. The ratio is greater than 1, which is okay because it ends. If this same question said this, then the ratio is greater than 1, and since it's infinite, it would be no sum. It diverges because the ratio is greater than 1. So be aware of that. When it ends, you can do it. It ends. You can uh, define that. When it doesn't end and the ratio is greater than 1, you cannot define that because the answers keep getting bigger and bigger. So first term. This one's messing with me. No, it's not. So it's 6 over 1 minus my ratio, which is 9. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. 6 over negative 8 is negative 3 fourths. The sum of the first eight numbers is negative 3 fourths. Okay? I want to address this one here because I want you to see how these two are the same. Same problem, a little bit different. It's still geometric, but this time it's infinite, but the ratio is less than 1. So it converges, which means you can do it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go A1, 1 minus R. Oh, I got to go back. Sorry, there's girls. Please, thank you. I got to go back. I'm sorry I got distracted. I did the wrong formula because it ends. I should have done the fancy formula. So this one's all wrong. He, 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 rewind. How easy is it to make a mistake going quickly? And some of you probably noticed that in the beginning. So I should have used the formula that doesn't end, which starts this way, but goes I run. So let me redo this. First term, 6, 1 minus the ratio, which is 9, to the 8th um, power over 1 minus 9. Okay? So let me redo this. And I would do this in the fancy calculator. How do I do it in the fancy calculator? The exact way that it's written. So I'm going to go control divide, 6 parenthesis, 1 minus 9 to the 8th. Now, if I were you, just in case, I would put this in parenthesis because if it's negative, it's going to make a difference. 1 minus 9, and I get a way bigger answer, which makes way more sense. So I should have written the sum of the first eight numbers is 3228540. Let me move that up a little bit. So let me back up because I went a little bit fast. This one, I did the wrong formula. Because it ends, I should have used the fancier formula. I get a really big answer. This one, it doesn't end. I use the more simplistic formula. The ratio is less than 1, so I can do it. Problem is, though, I'm messing with you on this one. You notice how the other ones say k minus 1, n minus 1? This one just says k. So you're actually going to have to find the first term. 
by plugging in a one. One fifth to the first power is one fifth. 30 times one fifth is six. So a six goes on top. One minus the ratio is one fifth. You can do this in your calculator, but I don't want to. Multiply by the reciprocal. And I get 15 over two. That's the sum of the infinite series. If this exact same problem said this, k equals 1, infinity, 30, 1 fifth to the k minus 1. Okay, let me move this up so you can see the difference. Then I'd still use the same formula, but now since it said the minus 1, this is my first term. Because if I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 is 1 times 30 is 30. So that would be 30 over 1 minus 1 fifth. If this same problem here instead said this, k equals 1, infinity, 35 to the k. There is no sum. It diverges because my ratio is greater than 1. All right, you'll also get questions on there that I don't actually want you to find the answer. I want you to just tell me if it converges or diverges. So I need the ratio. The ratio here is one-third. One-third is less than one. It converges. I can do it. This one, the ratio is two. That is greater than one. It diverges. There is no sum. And that's the test.